Hi, today I wanted to talk about how much a side infill extension, potentially with a kitchen, is costing in London at the moment. So we all know the things, typical kind of mid-terrace property in a row of London sort of terraces and you've got your outrigger going out the back and we want to kind of infill the side to make a bigger kitchen um, at the rear and you know potentially connect that with the room in between. So how much is that costing in 2024? Um, currently, we're not seeing prices any lower than about 150k plus VAT comeback for something like that. Some of that will depend on how much steel work needs to kind of go in to make that happen. And that will be kind of prescribed a by how many stories above the outrigger section you have, um, but also be prescribed by how long your extension is in the, the outrigger section rather. And equally, whether or not there are any columns that you're prepared to have inside and how big the opening at the back might be, because you know, you've seen the images, large kind of bifold doors, completely column free in the middle, well, that involves quite a number of large steels. Particularly in some small terraced streets, you, when you have large steels, you want to consider how they get into the house as well, um, whether they can come in through the front or whether they actually have to be craned over. So those sort of small periphery costs might not be thought about at the outset, they do think about how kind of structurally um, things can be designed to kind of give you the benefit of the space that you want. That's one thing to consider. The other thing that you might want to think about also is what the impact is going to be on the rest of the ground floor. So are you planning to you know, change your living room space? Are you creating a utility in between? What's going to happen into that dark room in the middle? Um, and how are all of those spaces going to connect to each other to kind of get you to the large kitchen kind of snug space out the back that's typically how these things are laid out um, but also you may want to be thinking about a ground floor toilet or a ground floor sort of small um, shower room or things like that um, if you do have side access um, potentially side access doors and, and, and how they come through so just going to give yourself that sort of element to consider and those costs can start to kind of build into what that kind of initial starting point is. Other things that you might want to think about are things like, you know, your boiler might need moving or you may need to kind of consider how the central heating is dealt with in that space. Are you going for underfloor heating? Things like that. So those what we call kind of infrastructure costs, the costs that you don't necessarily see. And by that means, you know, the, the nice, beautiful kitchen that you, you're looking forward to kind of the end goal. But the stuff that you don't see also has costs involved with it. Um, be careful on things like insulation and the thickness of insulation. Um, again, particularly when you've got quite narrow spaces on the, the kind of infill you want to maximize what's possible therefore you're probably going to spend a little bit more on the type of insulation that goes in so that it performs better to meet current standards because if you're going for um, slightly cheaper insulation the walls inevitably get thicker and for every small little bit of thickness you, you're losing space on the inside so you know think about what what construction material is being used and how the space is going to be insulated Equally with insulation and the changes in the regs, there are elements where you may have to upgrade the existing building fabrics insulation. So these are kind of almost costs that you might not have thought about. But in the long term, it's going to make your property cheaper to run. But in the first instance, you're kind of thinking, oh, God, I've got to fork out for this additional thing that I didn't think about. And all you're thinking about is the lovely cooking space where you're going to entertain your friends and family. Um, and that brings us nicely onto the actual kitchen. You know, you can buy a reasonably priced kitchen from a trade supplier like Haldens or something of that order for about £15,000 in some instances, it may be a little bit less. Um, and then you may have to think about worktops and some appliances on top. Or you can go on to kind of quite nice designer showrooms for kitchens and pay well in excess of that. You have to understand in terms of that investment, is this something that is going to be sort of a home for a long period of time? Are you looking to do it for short term use? How do you live as a family? How important is cooking to you? Uh, and all of those sort of things to understand what are you prepared to spend on a kitchen? Um, is it important to have oak line drawers, for example? Or are you comfortable with kind of plastic racking inside? Um, and is it important that it's really easy to clean? All of those things come into play as to how much your kitchen is going to cost. Um, and you want to factor in a, you know, a reasonable budget for that, but also for the appliances. Um, worktops, you know, varying from laminate to granite to some um, additional things in between, such as, you know, recycled bottles being sort of resin infilled. And there's some fantastic things that you can do with concrete and things. 
they all start to increment and in, implement the cost but they also impact how it looks um, and so you would probably wouldn't want to skimp on that too much and then sort of in terms of lighting design as well that can be quite critical in a kitchen and um, particularly in terms um, around sort of task lighting but also ambient lighting um, if you're a family that spends a lot of time in the kitchen and it's going to be quite a social space as is often the case with these kind of outrigger extensions you're kind of looking to create a small sort of entertaining space uh, perhaps with some soft seating how that all comes together with the lighting is quite important um, but good lighting doesn't necessarily have to cost the earth but you want to consider it in terms of fixtures as well as how you can kind of create um, different moods through the lighting and ambience in that space um, so just kind of you know playing on all of those things thinking about it at the outset factoring that into your budget what you're comfortable with um, and then you can always you know put in a cheap light shade in the first instance before you go in for a more expensive one going forward um, but equally there are a lot of websites now where you can kind of get knockoff equivalents of some fancy stuff just be mindful on the quality of some stuff um, because it can be very very different when you feel it in terms of the stableness and the rigidity um, but you know you've got different budgets for, for starting with that type of thing and, and some very good products in sort of the mid-range as well particularly around fixtures and fittings so as I said at the outset you're probably looking at upwards of about 150k for a kitchen extension plus VAT plus consultants fees um, and in terms of the other cost that you may well also need to consider is whether you're going to be able to live without a kitchen for a period of time likely to be upwards of about 12 weeks um, irrespective of what your builder will say you'll probably say eight and you'll still be there sort of you know a couple of weeks later um, and can you live without a kitchen so basically on takeouts or can you move a kitchen of some temporary form into the front room and this will often depend on you know how big the family is that you're trying to feed uh, if it's just two people then you may well be able to balance with you know a diet on salads or something but if there's children involved that doesn't always work so well so then you need to think about do you need to rent somewhere have you got family that you can go and eat at or friends and, and things like that so all of those things start to add up into your kind of budget plan of costs um but yeah that's where we're starting from at the moment upwards of about 150,000 plus VAT.